founder of uh, Arnaka Networks. I did my engineering from Turkey and before starting Arnaka, I started uh, Speedera, which was uh, acquired by Akamai in uh, 2005. And after that, started uh, Arnaka in 2009. Today, we are a uh, fast growing uh, organization, uh, having offices in the US and India, and, uh, having raised uh, uh, more than $50 million in funding. It was Sonal Puri and the media marketing and sales at Ariaga. Um, worked with Ajit at Speedera, managed channels and business development there. Once we got acquired into Akamai, I stayed there for a few years and uh, decided to leave Akamai and go back to the startup world. And the first person I called in was him because the Speedera experience was great. So here we are. Like Ajit mentioned, things are going really well. Um, we're all very busy, great customer traction. Ariaka means noble and truthful in Sanskrit. Okay. And I had a little book, I think that was written by Menka Gandhi, a uh, book of names. Mm -hmm. And typically, one starts something with, uh, you start with A and find something which is available from the website perspective. So I was really uh, enamored by the word Ariaka. Although well, slightly difficult to pronounce, but uh, <laughs> hopefully, we'll get everybody uh, to pronounce Ariaka. Uh, in terms of the idea for Ariaka, I would say I would consider US and India as the parents of, of, the, of the genesis behind the company. It was started primarily to address the problem of the communication issues and challenges when you have, let's say, an office in India and you have an office in the US and you want to collaborate and communicate, you want to transfer files, you want to have uh, video conferencing, you want to have uh, a white call. Up until now, before Ariaka showed up, the solutions that exist are very primitive, they're expensive, it takes a while, you literally have to lay a pipe to make that communication happen. It almost reminds you of the era where uh, before you can set up a call between US and India, you have to kind of book a call with an operator, wait for a few days, at a predefined time you, that call happens. And, and, and in terms of the, from a comp uh, the computer, uh, uh, networking and transfer, transferring files and communicating and collaboration is, that is the kind of the state of affairs that exists today. And the idea of Ayaka was how we can make that faster, easier, easier simpler and, sure. and cheaper and remove the whole drudgery around it. And that's what we do. Uh, we, we help, uh, and if you have multiple offices around the world, we make that communication happen much faster. I started Speed Era and that was a, a big success. And I think uh, it was, that is a very exciting thing to do is to create something out of nothing and, and, and make change lives of either people or the state of affairs. Just like literally moving the ball forward. This is all about progress. It's, it's all about uh, how we can, if you've been given a certain set of circumstances, how can you make your situation better sure. than what existed uh, yesterday? And so that's, that's the best part of it is building something out of that. It's a constant learning. Every day I learn something new. Mm -hmm. uh, probably that's what gets me up in the morning. What is, uh, what is going to be different today? In the end, it's all about building something or value where somebody will find it worthwhile to write a check for and, and it will become an integral part of their business. And in order to do that, ultimately it's the people behind it. So the biggest thing is how do you find the right people and once you've found them, how do you keep that passion and the energy uh, constantly lit up, how you can remove obstacles. I think that's kind of what uh, what my job, my role as a CEO is constantly find good people, uh, make sure they have all the tools necessary to make them productive and successful, uh, show them the, the vision and the passion and, and the excitement of what we are trying to do. At the same time, looking at, at those people who are probably not a good fit for the organization. Mm -hmm. So that uh, we can, as a company, we are not dragged and we, we can run as fast as we can. So, ultimately, it's all picking up the right idea, 
and then having the right set of people showing them the right tool uh, to build something of lasting value. I would say first is uh, today things are different in India than they were about 10 years ago. It was more challenging, I guess, to hire people to work for startups. But given the, either it has the, the Google or the Facebook effect, uh, people are more willing to work for startups. So things have changed uh, in, a, in a big, in a positive fashion where it's not that hard as long as there's something you can get people excited about. If you can show it to them that here's the coolest thing, here's the next bit, uh, big thing that we are really building and you really want to be a part of a ground floor opportunity. Here you get to see in hopefully 10 years from now we would have built a, a multi-billion dollar company and a really kind of game-changing uh, technology. They actually want to uh, work here. In fact, people ask me about attrition. I tell them, I have no attrition problem. In fact, we have to let people go and they don't want to leave us. And it's a very hard decision for us to say, look, we are just not the right fit for you. That is the challenge for us is to, uh, is, 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 is this process where we, we constantly try to improve uh, who we are as an organization. We don't really have a problem there. Our best thing for so, so it's. I think it starts with having something that you know, people really want to work for. Having the right. In fact, I was asking somebody as to, and he says, "I really learn a lot over here, and I have not learned this anywhere else." And I, and in fact, I say that to people that you will learn here in one year, what it will probably take five to ten years to learn in a big organization. Everything that you do today, you can see the effect and result of it. And people, what they really like about it, I think, is and it's something that not that we consciously do. They say we like the energy level, uh, we like there is no no politics, we like there is a desire to fix things, and it's not just to to, to, uh, to pass the buck. So I think this is not again, and, and I wanted to know so that we can do more of it. And, uh, it's just the energy level, so it's, it's a lot of those things that, that come together, which really makes us, at least at Ariaka, a good place to work and, 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 and startups, no matter, yes, there are a lot of startups out of every 10, probably 9 fail, but it's less about the, the <coughs> it, 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 is, it is important to have a success, but it's also about what did you learn as part of, of being a startup, and there's no better place to learn than a startup. Just keep hiring uh, people who think similar uh, to what, how you think. And I think they pretty much the organization revolves around the leadership. Yeah. So as long as what I'm asking Sonal or Ashwat to do, they in turn ask their other people who report to them. And, and before you know, that is, that is what becomes the defining and the, the common thread in the, in the common culture. I don't think that do anything different or special. It's just that, okay, guys. We all have to have a sense of urgency. We all have to kind of deliver the product yesterday. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure the customers are happy. We have to do it in, in, a, in, a, in a very elegant and a simple manner. We have to do it while being conscious about the cost. So as long as you give them some overall parameters, people kind of tend to form a culture around that. Sure. So I, I don't know if there's anything. Yeah, I would say openness, right? So having access to all the executives, Anybody can pick up a phone and call it and he responds to everybody's email. So there's no hierarchy per se. Everybody's very open. Sure. You know, we hang out with the team. We sit upstairs and have lunch with everyone. So it's a really nice open culture where community, you know, the, the sense of community and working together and having fun. Sure. We have a lot of fun too. <laughs> Sure. Um, question of email, the only problem is if I send an email which is contrary to what she wants, then I get a crush. <laughs> so I have to watch out. Well, so, all right. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm like so eager to respond. I know if I don't respond to the email, I'll have another 60 emails within an hour and then it'll get buried. Yeah. So I would kind of shoot before I even uh, ask any questions. Sometimes it lands me to trouble. <laughs> to work my way up. Sure. The CEO works for the rest of the company. <laughs> Absolutely. When it is hard, it, is, it takes way too long and weighs you down. But other than that, once you're kind of able to get it, 
is the best thing you can have. Because that is, uh, the enterprise sales is, is, is something where, well, I, if, if, if I understand you correctly, as long as you're delivering that, as long as you're taking care of them, you have them for life. Mm-hmm. You literally have a customer for life. They become your, your biggest and the best spokesperson. You can build a very strong and stable and sustainable business mm-hmm. compared to, uh, let's say, if it's, an, if it's a non-enterprise uh, sales. And, and it's kind of a, it's also very complex sales. It's a sophisticated sales. It's multi-dimensional. You have to kind of go from sometimes they refer it to from the janitor to to the top management. You have to appease and appeal to everybody because everybody anybody can veto it. Yeah. And, and so you have gotta make sure that you got everybody on your side. Sure. But it's tough. But it's, it's if it was not that difficult, it wouldn't be as much fun. But in the end, once you win. And enterprise sales, you really feel good. So you can publish, uh, you fly, and then you can come back on Monday and then work until, the, until Saturday. Right? <laughs> so we are at about a hundred plus uh, contracts right now, and it, it, it is it is we probably as uh, I've been told by my investors, one of the fastest growing uh, software as a service or SaaS companies uh, around. And uh, given that what we're doing is we're redefining and changing almost three multi-billion dollar market. One market is the whole MPLS and the whole networking. Mm. I talked about uh, it's dominated by companies like AT&T and Horizon and Sprint. We talk about uh, 800 pound gorilla. These are like 80,000 pound gorilla. And we, are, uh, we, are, we, we, we have a solution which, which is much better than they, they can offer. Then the next uh, so, uh, solution that we are uh, we, we have is the van optimization as a service, which is currently dominated by companies like Riverland and uh, a bunch of others. But they are the more box-based solutions, like having a generator in your backyard versus just simply plugging it to a uh, utility, just far more reliable and, and less expensive. And the third is the application delivery, which still is a huge, uh, uh, almost a multi-billion dollar market. What we do is we offer a single integrated solution which has been, been built from the ground up uh, to, to make it uh, much easier and simpler. So that's kind of the market we're going after. We're trying to, so it's like we have invented an, a, a plane and now we, we have to uh, create a service out of that, um, that invention. And so we are in that early phase where uh, next year, where we will we'll see that we're finally in the groove and, and we've reached an inflection point. Typically, you need about 200, 200 customers or so to have that uh, the flywheel effect where, where things just take off. And, and when people start thinking about NPLS or van optimization or application delivery, they will automatically think about that. Sure. But the first few set of the hundred or so customers the most difficult. Because this is more of an evangelical sale. We have to tell them, guys, there is a better way. You just don't know yet about it. But you have to believe it. You have to trust it. You have to experience it. And those who, who do, they have this wow moment. They say, wow, I didn't know uh, this thing is possible. This thing could happen. And that's what we have is, is, a, is almost every customer of ours is, is just like, they're not very rare that people will get excited by something they can't put their hands on. It's not like an iPhone where you can feel it, yeah, touch yeah, it, and say, yeah. "Oh, this is beautiful." What we do is is something behind the scenes. It's like a belief in God or or, or the air, which you, which you feel. Oh, I feel good that I got some oxygen. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like that. So the beautiful thing is, what we've done is, if you can think of it, uh, we've created a highway, mm-hmm. and right now we are letting. The, car, the cars run over on, on, on that highway that we built. Like a, a, the potential we have, is we can we can have trucks drive on it. We can have uh, cargo, and we can move passengers. There are a bunch of things we can do with that platform that we call it. But right now, the, the market that we have we are focusing on that itself is 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 going to be good for us for the next few years will be good for us for the next few thousand customers. Mm-hmm. So we're just kind of making sure that everything is is 
is kind of delivered flawlessly. Uh, there are things in, in the in the realm of reporting, insertion model, gets into the nitty gritty of the technology, We're just uh, improving the look and the feel of it. But, uh, and, but the platform that we built will allow us to offer far more services over the next few years. So uh, for investors, as long as you are adding value, as long as uh, you are uh, adding, bringing customers, as long as they think they'll have a great exit and, and make a few X on their, on their returns, they are happy. Um, as long as you don't ask for more money. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like parents. <laughs> okay. And use I, your money wisely. <laughs> use your money wisely. When are you going to get up and, and, and run on your own feet and not come back and ask for more money? So, uh, so yeah, I, I, I'm really thrilled to have a great uh, board, very understanding. We understand that what we're doing is really uh, something very unique, not, has not been done before. Uh, they are very patient. Learning with them is one of the Nexus Venture, one of the earliest believers in the vision and the whole cloud based model. I've got uh, VCs uh, from Japan, part of the Sumitomo Group, Presidio Ventures. I've got VCs from US, uh, uh, Sand Hill, and some of the best names uh, in, the, in the venture capital world, uh, Trinity and uh, more data, they're all multi billion dollar funds, as well as uh, Intervest. All of these are top notch uh, VC firms based in the US. Uh, uh, the uh, India based firm uh, fund and uh, the Sumitomo Presidio Group, which is uh, based on Japan. They do bring uh, they, with their understanding of the market, the connections they have uh, in terms of hiring, in terms of connecting with partners, uh, in terms of asking the questions at the board meetings. Sometimes, which uh, because I'm in the thick of it, I forget, uh, and they will constantly remind. Mm -hmm me about are you sure uh, so just by asking that question mm -hmm. they uh, at least uh, keep keep the team together sure. and, and being supportive so I think uh, that's the, the best thing you can do is like all right as, uh, as you have to be encouraging you have to you have to say all right we believe in you uh, you, you think you are on the right track but have you given this a thought or that a thought uh, that's the, the best thing I think uh, as, a, as a board member as, a, as an investor it just means you never go to sleep. Uh, you have to be constant. You have to be up early in the morning, ca catch up on emails, fi try to find those people who are about to go home uh, after the, the regular shift, and then uh, then uh, then, then uh, staying up late so you can catch uh, connect with the guys who come in uh, in the morning. Uh, but it's it, it's fun. It's the, there is a level of excitement and uh, energy. That, that's over here, which is not as much in the US. Oh, really? A bunch, yeah, they have like a bunch of people. That I think most of them are in the between the 25 to 30 years range. When you have that kind of a mixture, it becomes volatile, and there is a lot of uh, excitement. Besides the uh, the bun omelet, which uh, gets delivered over here, but we don't get it. We get the best. <laughs> Yeah, the best food over here. Best food over here. You have the cab stuff like it's, you get a chauffeur-driven car. You've got lunch and dinner, and the pantry is full of all the kind of the nice food. And there's hot chai. There's hot on demand. Food. That's on demand. By far the best. And, and we don't have all that that, that luxury in the US. The offices are much better here than than actually uh, in in US. But it's just uh, so it, it it is great. Uh, one one aspect of it is it allows us to be a literally. 7 by 24. There was, there's no other way you can really do it by, by if you were just a, a US centric company. And, and given our business, we have customers who are spread around the world and they need support and they need access to marketing and engineering around the clock. And this is the only way we can provide it. We can literally have people who are in the US for let's say for dollars, and then the moment US goes to sleep, India wakes up. Uh, and there is, we don't miss a heartbeat. Kind of so it's really, it, it is a hard work, but in the end, if you can make it work, I mean, this is really good. This is the best uh, anything you can get. I actually already, I, I thought I was um, completely doused the flame and turn it off. And for almost two years, I, I, I thought I would take an early retirement. I was very, in my early 40s, but then my wife kicked me out of the house. Because I became a nuisance at home. Home CEO. <laughs> and the home CEO. 
And he said, you need to figure out and do something with your life and don't keep looking out of the window. So, so that's what happened. And, and I said, look, I, I thought I was off that treadmill. And I don't want to jump back on the treadmill. It's like, at speed it up. That treadmill was going at about 100 miles an hour. And, and I was so glad I, I jumped off. But if that feeling only lasted for a year or two after that, I was also getting, uh, it's like, okay, what do we, I was looking for the purpose of life and meaning of life. And, uh, <laughs> I was just short of uh, getting into religion and philosophy. And I'm so glad I did uh, go there. And, and then I landed with this idea. And now, it seems, it's been almost three years now, and I'm back at that treadmill going at 100 miles an hour. And there's nothing else I want to do in the world. It just consumes you. It's just, uh, yeah. I'm, you get so passionate. It's now I won't, I, I don't, and I can't rest till there is something that happens where we say, okay, now we are at a, at a, at a, at a cruise, uh, at an altitude where everybody can take their seatbelts off and you can uh, walk around the aisles and all. So, it, it, it's, it started, we are in a phase where it's all up and we are kind of rapidly ascending. And we're looking for maybe in a, in, a, in a year or two years from now, we'll have a little respite and a little breather mm -hmm. where we can we can uh, we can lighten up and uh, calm down. Uh, yeah, calm down sure. a little bit. So it's it's just a it's just a something in, in you can reset your mind. Mm -hmm. It's all in your head. Once you yeah. get back into something, you become passionate. It's like falling in love, I guess. Uh, you fall in love, <laughs> and <laughs> you get married, have kids, and then uh, probably it's a uh, few years go by. And then uh, you could always fall back in love again, and the fire is always there. You just have to go to college. Yeah, you just have to love again. You just have to light it up again. First of all, nothing is difficult for somebody who's determined to do it, somebody who's got the right team and can sustain it for as long as, like, let's say, we have done it. Having said that, what we are doing right now. And People have been wanting to do this for the last 10 years. I've heard, I've spoken to analysts, Gartner Group and other folks. When I showed them the idea in 2008 and 2009, they, they all said, you know what, this is exactly what we've been wanting to do for the last five years, seven years. They all want, as they say, success has a lot of uh, uh, fathers and, and failure has none. So, what, even though they all have been saying they wanted to do it, and this is the best thing, it's been three years or maybe about two years since we told everybody what we're doing, since everybody's told us how awesome we are, yet there's not a single company that we know of that is doing what we do. And uh, <coughs> could there be someone tomorrow? Absolutely. But in, in this market is huge and can easily sustain more than one, provide, uh, one, one player in the market. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, and, as this, uh, and as I believe, once you're very successful, the market will always create a number two and a number three player. There's always, for every Apple, there's always a Nokia or a Samsung or a Rem. I mean, you cannot, you cannot be, uh, you can't, I mean, it's just not feasible. There are at least, I would say, tens of thousands of companies that could be using our technology and benefiting. If we just have no way of reaching out to them, we are weak even if all of them came to us today, there is no way we can scale that fast. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's all good, and, but as far as we're concerned, we haven't seen anyone. It was, it was a very difficult thing for us to do. In the beginning, everybody told us, yes, this is the way it needs to be done, it should have been done, but no, it cannot be done. And the more they said, it took me about six months of, uh, of going to different people. The more they said, it cannot be done, the more I was determined to figure it out how it can be done because then I knew if I can solve it there will be the, I, just the, the, the barrier to entry would be even higher and that's what happened after constant interaction with a bunch of people we figured out a way to make something that was was totally not going to happen uh, where today we have something which runs flawlessly and it works beautifully. I would say it depends on the time of the day and the day of the week you ask me. Uh, but today, well, yeah, today I would say it's about my focus is on first and foremost is on sales, and it's about having a good set of people who are making sure they're delivering the message 
in the, in the, in the most appropriate fashion. So sales is, is my number one, which is directly tied to revenue, mm -hmm. which is directly tied to profitability. Yeah. And I would say the next, or probably the, at, at the same level, is the, 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 the customer satisfaction mm -hmm. side. Making sure whatever we have sold, we are delivering value. Mm -hmm. Customers are happy, they are referenceable, they want to come back for more. Mm -hmm. So those, those are two of the two biggest. And then there are a bunch of things below that where mm -hmm. we're making sure that people are happy, they're still excited, they're still passionate. Uh, I'm really making sure there are no roadblocks. Um, and, 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 so, and then it goes on. So that's, that's I would say, the, the, the top two or three things that I really I wake up and say, all right, sales, customer satisfaction, people. Sure. Uh, a multi, a multi-billion dollar company, uh -huh. uh, a name to be reckoned with, something that I, I, I can feel really good mm -hmm. and, uh, and people feel really good. Hopefully, uh, have created enormous amount of success and financial success and professional success for the people. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a result, the uh, customers are happy and thrilled that they were able to experience a solution which didn't exist ten years ago. You no, know, I love that whole thing about people quitting big companies and stuff. In the U.S., one of the biggest job generator is the startups. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, the more Facebooks and Googles and Cisco's and HP's and they were all startups. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that India is catching on to that. Because mm -hmm. there's nothing bigger, nothing more that can contribute to success of India and its people mm -hmm. than these people mm -hmm. who are starting up. Now, a lot of them will, will not succeed. Mm -hmm. Perhaps in the first round, mm -hmm. but they, if they keep at it, second, third, fourth, or fifth venture, they would, they will succeed hopefully, mm -hmm. or a majority of them will succeed. But in the process, they want to make themselves better. They want to enrich the lives of everybody they work with, and as a country, that is the best thing that can happen in this country. U.S. is successful because of that startup and entrepreneurial nature. I've heard Israel has the, the is so successful and, and because people are entrepreneurial over there. I see no reason why that same cannot be true about India. We've got some of the best and the smartest minds. We've, we've, we've got a, a great environment, great educational institutes. We've, we just need a few things, we just need a few people who, who say, all right, I don't care. You would, would, don't want to give uh, uh, have your daughter get married to me because I'm not working for IBM, or I lose my uh, uh, the, the, because I'm not in IAS. Okay, I won't get uh, whatever the benefits that come with being in an IAS. I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Hopefully, that will become an attraction. That will be the uh, if you're an entrepreneur, people will think, okay, you you uh, you are somebody. You are really a, a person with high energy and passion and focus and dedication. You don't want to just spend your rest of your life uh, being and nothing. I have nothing against being an IAS or an IBM, uh, but those companies, the contribution, the, the, the value that you can create is very limited. You, you're designed to conform to the system. You don't like typically you coming around and changing things. Yeah. Uh, right. So it's a great trend. And uh, I wish them success, and I, I, I want to see more product companies come out of India. Mm -hmm. And if, if that, if more of what you're saying is true, mm -hmm. we'll probably see a lot of uh, big ideas come out of India. But you should continue to uh, <laughs> seek the entrepreneurs. That I think what you said is everybody writes about successful companies, uh, but that's already too late. And, and I think what you're doing is 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 quite commendable, providing a forum to to entrepreneurs. So you should. Should go and talk to more of those twenty-year-olds. We do that all the time. <laughs> the twenty-year-olds is great. I always want to tell them that at least they should work for a couple of years in some uh, in big companies, so they know what not to do, sure. and they start their own company, and, and 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 have some some experienced people as their mentor, and and seek uh, and seek advice and have a good connection and a good network.
eventually. And think about product. Think about think about and the single thing that, that can that can help them is 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 will what I'm doing make this world, make this country, or make my surrounding a better place? Like there, if you can, if the answer is yes to that, then the rest you don't have to worry. Things will just fall in place.